Welcome to Next Game's Gesh Fate series. Now in this video, I'll be going over Resenma, Tier 1 NMs Part 2. Now in this video, we'll be covering four additional Tier 1 NMs, and I'll give an overview of the battle strategies they recommend for taking them on, and then I'll show you battle examples of all four of them with the ninja job and the warrior sub job. Now this series as a whole is going to cover how to defeat all of the Eshin NMs on your way to Aeonic Weapon. Ninja can solo all but roughly 10 of these, and I will show you how to solo all but those 10, and then we'll finish the series with showing you strategies for beating the most challenging NMs, which normally involves a summoner strategy in my case. Now in this video, we continue Resenma T1 NMs, this time taking on the next four NMs, which I would say are more challenging than the first six, but not as hard as our final two. That will be covered in our next episode. Now unlike previous NMs, each of these requires a special setup and attention, so I will discuss what to expect and the strategies before showing you the actual battle examples. First, let's discuss Chromdub. Now he is a Doolahan that will block most of the damage taken from the front, so I recommend using a Trust Tank such as Arc EV to hold hate while you get damage in from the rear. The biggest risk here is an ability called Noah Hintu, which can do 3 to 5 thousand damage to everyone in range. Now you can negate this damage with Migawari, which you should have up at all times during this fight. But of course, that's not going to help your trust. Therefore, I recommend bringing Matsui P, an Arc TT, or another stunner to stun Noah Hintu. But even with this precaution, oftentimes a trust or two is going to die during this fight. And that's okay, because it's a relatively short one, as long as you're not tanking. You just want to make sure that you stay focused and keep getting your skill chain damage in. Two complete four-step, multi-step skill chains with dual magic burst is often enough to completely deplete all of his hit points. As long as you keep Megawari up, you should be just fine to make it through this one. Now for trust, I suggest Arki V to tank, Joachim or Omeo for marches, Kurumoru for Dia, Haste, and Dispel, Yoran Oran for cures, and Metsui P or Arc TT for stunts. Next, let's discuss Sabotendo Royale. Now the main focus in this fight needs to continually be on your damage output and minimizing his TP gain at all times. If done correctly, you can start with a 4 step light skill chain into a dual magic burst. This will reduce him to about 25% hit points. Then just a 2-3 to three step skill chain will finish him off the rest of the way. Now this will make it so he uses 2000 needles and sometimes 4000 needles but does not do the random needles and that is the pattern that this NM will normally go in. This is also why you want to minimize the TP gain, because the longer the fight goes on, the further along that path he will get. If the fight goes much longer than the above plan, then he is going to use that random needles, which will normally kill several of your trust. Make sure you have Migawari up, and keep your damage going, and you should be just fine though. Also note, he's going to use 100 Fist at some point during this fight, but normally your evasion is high enough that it's not an issue. Use his Seek again if you're concerned. I recommend tanking yourself to make sure his TP gain is as low as possible, using Matsui P for Magic Burst and a possible Lucky Stun, Joachim or Omiya for Marches, Kurumoru for Haste and Dia, and Yorin Oran and Monboro for Cures. Next, we will talk about Oryx. Oryx is a Monoceros mob that is actually not as challenging as several of the Monoceros predecessors, but you still need to use caution when fighting this one. Now the fight is going to start with Oryx having a 50% DT reduction, which is going to greatly slow down your fight if you leave it up. To remove it, use Blade He from the front to quickly break the horn and it'll be gone. I find that using Berserk and Warcry will usually make the next weapon skill trigger the horn breaking, so I usually just pop those right at the start of the fight and get the uh, DT reduction immediately removed. Now keep the Blade He spam going for the remainder of the fight and you should make quick work of this one. I recommend that you keep Megawari up, as at times Lightning Spear can spike for high damage, especially if you don't have a high magic evasion set. You can also be inflicted with over a minute of amnesia at times, which can really slow down this fight, so bring your patience. Otherwise, this one is not overly challenging. For Trust, I recommend using Kultata to increase your attack, Joachim for Marches, Kurumuru for Haste and Dia, and Monboro and Yoran Oran for Cures. Now here we are on the final NM of this video, Selkit, my favorite T1 NM, as if done correctly, he is hopelessly locked in a TP cycle that leaves you in no danger. Now the trick with him is to use Trust, whose attacks count as weapon skills, and view yourself to be continually weapon skilling the entire fight without any stopping. This is because he will always follow any weapon skill up with Hell Scissors, 
and not use any of his other nasty AoE moves and abilities that can quickly wipe your party. Now, Hell Scissors in itself can be dangerous as it will reduce your hit points to a critical level, but it will also reset hate on you, so this means that you can just continually bounce hate back and forth between you and another tank, and as long as you have shadows up, you're really never going to be of any risk of dying. For this, I recommend using August as your other tank, as his attacks count as weapon skills, so he's going to help you towards this endeavor. I also recommend using Arcelia, or more importantly, Arcelia 2, as her attacks count as weapon skills as well. I then fill in the remaining slots with my usual trust of Joachim, Yoran Oren, and Monboro, and let the weapon skill spam commence. Note, Theodore and Balamor also have their attacks count as weapon skills, so if you find yourself struggling to keep Selkit locked in this Hell Scissors mode, go ahead and try and use one of those two in place of Monboro to see if that helps out. Okay, that should be all you need to know for taking on these four next NMs. Let's go ahead and see what the battle examples will look like. Enjoy the runs, everyone.
second set of Tier 1 for Zingma and N. Hope you found that helpful. Next week, we'll be taking on the final two before moving on to Tier 2. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.